Hello lab buddies. Let's check out the mailbag. What do I get this week? Make sure to subscribe, click the bell icon if you haven't done that already. And give me a like if you like mailbag videos and you like what I'm doing. These are some Rhino tweezers. Now I've already got one of these. Just here. I purchased this one a couple of years ago. Just to do a comparison, make sure they look exactly the same. In case they're fakes, you never quite know. They look very similar, but not exactly the same. See the writing there? Slightly different. So this is my original one, which I've been really happy with. They're really good tweezers. The RH314. The logo is also slightly different. I'm going to get the thing in focus, yeah? The logo is similar, but slightly different. In fact, the one I just purchased looks better. <laughs> Maybe the one I've all been having is the fake one. I don't know. Anyway, let's have a look at them. I wasn't going to get them out, but seeing as I've now got suspicions, let's check them out. Cap on the tip like these ones did when I got them. They feel the same. They feel very similar. Width is basically the same, about the same width, yeah. Tip is very sharp. Very sharp tip on these. Um, might have had a few hard days, they've been bent a little bit and straightened up a couple of times and things like that. But no, they feel fine. I don't know, maybe it's a slightly different manufacturer or something like that, but... Yeah, they're not exactly the same tweezer. They're not exactly the same. The length is very slightly different as well. This little scalloping up here is a little bit different, so they're not exactly the same tweezer. One of these is a fake one, or they're maybe they're both fake ones, I don't know. But the reason I got them originally is because they had nice sharp tips on them. Which is the one which I just got? This one. We'll see how these go. I mean, the ones I've got here, which could also be fake, I don't know. I don't know which one's fake, one's probably fake. They've been really good, I've been really happy and really good for doing fine surface mount work. So I've got some more, thinking that, you know, one day I'm going to lose these or break them or something. And I bought two, because, you know, why not? I always tend to buy more than I need, because I'm a bit like that. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters, that your help, I wouldn't get a buy things from our bag so easily. If you want to become a Patreon, check out my links down below. So this is a GPS antenna. I got this for my Nixie clock over here. Now this was donated to me by a viewer. Thank you very much Mr. Viewer, you know who you are. It sits nicely on the back of my desk here as a nice backdrop for videos. And it's got a GPS socket on the back and this is an antenna which plugs into that. In theory, it's got a real time clock built into it as well so if you power it down, which I tend to do in between videos. I don't run it the whole time because I want it to last a long time. You know, the Nixie tubes don't last forever all the time. They last, you know, years, but I want them to last a very long time. This has got a real-time clock built into it, so I can power it down, power it back up again, and it comes back to the correct time because the real-time clock is running in the background. But it also has GPS, which I believe is used to automatically set the clock. So I'm going to actually hook this up to it and mount this, hopefully, somewhere where we can get a GPS signal. We'll see if it does anything with the clock. I'm not going to try it now, but um, that's the theory. This was quite cheap. This is from AliExpress, so make sure you check the links out down below as well. Um, as with these, these from AliExpress as well. And this wasn't that expensive. These are some really small banana jacks. Uh, oh, this packet's sealed, so I'll just show you to the bag. Eh? So these are 2mm size banana jacks. 2mm. I thought it'd be really handy to have some small ones like this, little adapter leads. I actually bought some a few different things recently. Well, I had some adapters for 2mm and stuff like that as well, so I could make some test leads up for a test jig and things like that. I thought there's nice little leads here, nice and small, and allows different variations. I actually got them for a specific purpose. Right now my mind is gone, and I don't remember exactly what that purpose was, but I did buy them for a specific purposes. Actually, a particular thing I was going to build using these cables and some other data stuff like that, but it's gone. So I'll tell you about it when I figure it out one day. I think I need to sharpen my grand knife. I need to sharpen memory. Get it? After the last thing, sharpen memory. Yeah, I should just leave the jokes. This is a crimping tool. In my last mail bag I showed some ferrules. Not feral people, feral terminals. And this is a crimp tool for those. So you put the ferrule in there and you just crimp it down. And it squashes it down to the right size to hold onto the wires. So when you put it into a screw terminal, it um, doesn't fray the wires and it all holds a bit nicely. So you can actually see here, there's some examples of ferrules. Capacity, 0.25mm to 10mm is the size I can do. So, nice wide range. And that's ample for what I do. For years I've been using a pair of crimps, <laughs> you know, if I've used them at all. Sometimes I just rely on a screw tool and put them down, which isn't really how you're supposed to do it. So I thought, well, I'm going to get the proper tool and do it properly, you know, once and for all, and stop bodging things like that. 
What do you think of the term lab buddies? So, you know, my supporters and people who watch the channel. Let me know down below in the comments. I'd like to know what you think. So these are some antenna mounts. Well, actual antennas, so I should say, not mounts. These are for lure. These are actually roof antennas. So it's got a split nut on here. So you can drill a hole in the roof for the, or the vehicle or whatever body we're going to put it onto, for example, or mount or whatever. And because of the split nut, you can slip that over the cable. So you, you thread it all through. This should be smaller than that or close to it. It is. You can put it through, slip, slip the nut on, and then do it up. I don't know how good these are. I thought I'd get some, give it a try. The idea being that my current setup in the motorhome we use for doing events has some modules side by side basically. The antennas are quite close together. You're only like uh, less than a foot apart. There's four of them. And I think they're interfering with each other a little bit, you know, they're drowning each other out from the RF interference, you know, just they're just splattering each other. So I actually want to put some of these on the roof of the motorhome, draw some holes in, put these in, and have external antennas. And I thought these are nice and discreet, really easy to mount and put them just about anywhere, really small, not damn actual antennas sticking up. And um these should be weatherproof as well, because you know it's a sealed top, it's got a weather seal on the bottom there, so and it's quick and easy to store, drill a hole, bolt it on, dead easy. You can do it by yourself without anybody even helping you. So I've got four of those, all exactly the same. I might just go and take one, actually going to an event in the bowl, especially leaving in the bowl well, now really, but I'm, I have to record this video. So I'm going to take these with me and I'll actually just hook them up and see how they go, just as antennas as they are without being mounted. If the range works fine from inside the vehicle, then I'll definitely be better outside it. I think the specs are something like 2 dBi on gain or something, so when you talk about DBI, talk about an isotropic radiator. So it actually doesn't have gain, because I think an isotropic radiator has got like a 3 dB gain straight away. <laughs> well, a 3 dB loss. I can't even say exactly it works. Anyway, DBI is definitely a lower value than a DB. People complain saying so I've got it wrong. And I may have it wrong, but that's my learnings over the years from doing CB stuff and antennas of CB and the stipulations of DBI over DB, which had a higher gain rating of DBI to make them sound bigger. So if you've got a 2 dBi, it probably means a 0 dB gain or something like that. Yeah, no gain. <laughs> anyway, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Might be good, might be rubbish. Huh, okay, big packet for that. Now, the annoying thing is, I know what these are, these are 2mm to 4mm banana adapters, which actually go with these cables. I think it's related to the same project, which I'd have to remember what it is. Um, the only thing is, actually, after purchase these, I realised, actually, I've already got some of these. Uh, see? Here they are. I've already got some. And they've got two lots. Oh, well. It's funny, I can remember making a mistake. I can't remember what I bought them for. <laughs> uh, it's hilarious. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Like the video, if you like my mailbag stuff. Yeah. Lots of... Packaging. Ah, right, cool. It's the fan assembly for Raspberry Pi. Double fan on heatsink. Pretty cool. So, little flying lead on there. Plugs into the headers on the Raspberry Pi. And that will obviously stick on with this. This feels like normal thermal head. It doesn't feel like an adhesive one. It's not. So it's supposed to actually adhere on then. That's not going to stick, that's going to sit there. Yeah, that's not quite what I want. <laughs> I'm going to have to think of that one. But it's supposed to be a self-adhesive. But that is just a thermal pad. That's not actually, well they are slightly sticky, but not very. Not enough to hold this thing on. I might have to look at different mounting. That's annoying. And it also comes with this other little tiny little heat sink, which is for something, I don't know what. That's also got a little copper one here as well. Cam's not in quite the right place, so you can't really see it, but it does something. This little thing here, which is double sided, and this, which doesn't really have proper outings. I might have to use something else, I don't know what. I might actually have some thermal adhesive actually, I think I might have some. So, yes. And as to why there's a screwdriver in there, I've got no idea. Maybe it's got to screw to a heat sink, which you shouldn't really have to take off anyway. I don't know. Weird. Also, don't forget to check out my other videos in this one. I've got a playlist at the end, loads of videos there. Like, obviously, this channel's not got many yet, I'm still building this channel up. But my other main channel has got heaps of videos on there, so it links to the original playlist in there. Alright, it's more Raspberry Pi stuff. I showed these before. I've got another one, basically. 
I did a little video on this alone actually, just did a special video just doing this setup. So this is Raspberry Pi case, SSD case, so that's the actual enclosure. Some Geekworm, it's X, it's X820, yeah, X820 version 3. So it's got this board here, you put an SSD on the back of it, mount it in, mount it on there, screw it on. And this goes inside the case, you mount it in there, and the Raspberry Pi is mounted onto this as well, and hooks up to it, to the to power supply rails on here, so this powers the Raspberry Pi. So um, yeah, I've already used one of these, and I've got another one thinking I'm I want to have two Raspberry Pis, one which is used as a web server for events and a backup one. So I'll have two identical Raspberry Pi servers set up. So if one falls over, I can unplug it, plug another one in and carry on. I always have backups. Always. Sometimes more than one. So if you want some more information on this, it's just here. Been links to down below as well. So, um, so this is for adding an SSD to Raspberry Pi 3B+. So if you want to know more about adding an SSD to a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, then check out the video which I did on my main channel. Just go search for Raspberry Pi 3 Plus SSD or something like that. With Raspberry Pi SSD, I can't remember. It was on my channel anyway. I only did it about eight weeks ago, something like that. It was, it's not recently anyway. It might be too hard to find it amongst my thousands of videos. Well, not quite thousands yet. It's almost thousands. I've done about 100, I think, something like that. Make sure you subscribe, like the video, click the bell icon if you've already done that. Check out all the links down below to go to my affiliate links. I get a commission for some of those things when you buy through those links. Helps me out, helps me to buy things for mailbag and that sort of stuff. And it also helps me to get review items. All that stuff contributes to the channel. So I'll catch you later. Bye.